Hello, my name is Matthew Jonas, and I am the founder and president of Top Fire Media. I appreciate the opportunity today to speak in front of everyone at the Think Global Conference. And today's uh, presentation is going to be focused on best practices for digital marketing and advertising and public relations. Just to give you guys an overview of Top Fire Media, we are one of the premier PR and digital agencies in the US. Uh, we are focused in our discipline of a full service agency uh, of search engine optimization, pay-per-click advertising, digital advertising, public relations, website design, email marketing, and we, are, we have been recognized by entrepreneurs, one of the top marketing suppliers. We have won several awards for our public relations and also for our digital advertising prowess and outcomes and results. Our sister company is iFranchise Group, which is one of the largest franchise consulting firms in uh, the, around the globe. Uh, they've worked with approximately 1,500 businesses that they have helped become franchised. Just to give you guys a little bit more about our foundation at Top Fire Media. The first step to any successful digital media and advertising campaign, we believe is in the setup of the strategy and research of every one of our brands that we work with. We do a very exhaustive onboarding process and we really do believe in what is called measuring twice and cutting once approach to onboarding new clients. This will give you some of our experience and some of our strategic uh, uh, direction that we take with every new client. First thing that we'll do is we want to understand each and every one of the clients that we work with from a research, from a strategy, and also from an understanding of who their target audience is. We believe in uh, assessing every one of our clients' websites from an SEO, from a content structure, and also from an advertising uh, structure. We start typically with a brand voice to identify you know, who you're trying to target, what your brand stands for, the key messaging, which is gonna be later used for your advertising and organic SEO campaigns. And then ideally, who are you targeting? You know, are you going after the products and services uh, in your industry? What type of exporters do you want to attract and work with? Um, and then we get into overall campaign setup um, where we will actually go through and come up with the creative, the strategy, and we'll make sure that your site is pixelated to ensure that every different piece of content and data point is accounted for. Uh, we also will produce what is called downloadable content this is really a five to eight page prominent piece of content that is going to act as a classic conversion based uh, component to help to help convert more of your traffic into opportunities and leads for you. And then we'll set up a dashboard and make sure that everything is set up across the site so that you have access to your reporting features 24 seven, seven days a week. Uh, when we talk about best practices uh, in your industry from a global and international standpoint, the key to this is really gonna be, you know, what is your growth goals? What are you looking to accomplish? How many new customers are you looking to reach? How much revenue are you looking to generate? Uh, from there, we wanna make sure that we're doing a competitive analysis, not just from your own website, but we wanna dig in and we wanna look at your competitor's website. We wanna understand what kind of keyword ranking, what kind of content, also, what is separating the message within your industry from your competitors and from your regional competitors? This will give our content and this should give your internal marketing folks a, a great understanding of the strategy from a content standpoint and understanding who is going to influence your buyer profile. Um, then you can validate your positioning and your brand within your marketplace so that you stick out. I look at the global international marketplace as a big uh, goldfish uh, pond so that you have your bright neon 
and you have your orange goldfish. The key is you want to be that bright neon green goldfish that resonates in your market with your, your, your customers and your clients. Understanding what KPIs and measurement tools are going to be very important to start off any type of uh, advertising campaign. And we look at this and we recommend to all of our clients understanding and evaluating what your past KPRs, what your data from your AdWords and your Google Analytics and any other uh, client profile that you can provide so that we can understand what the goalpost will be in, in measuring what a successful campaign will be. And also for our account directors and our advertising managers to understand what is going to be involved in a strategy uh, for a type of business that you're looking to attract. Again, reverse engineering the advertising budget based on your growth goals and based on KPIs of a cost per lead, cost per acquisition, understanding the impressions, um, and understanding who is searching your subject, who is searching your website. Uh, and then we want to uh, develop an, a strategic and tactical approach, uh, really focusing on three to four main digital tactics and channels. And then from there, we start to learn your buyer uh, cycle, understanding what is going to motivate them to be attracted to your site, understanding what information your, your buyers are researching online in today's marketplace is, is extremely important. Um, we want to be able to make sure that your website is speaking to your audience so that you can attract the right audience and that you can convert that audience into a phone call or into a form fill is super important. Um, when we get into best practices and talking about search engine optimization, you know, this is really your first step to lead generation. You know, as, as my friends at Google would say that the best place to hide a dead body is on page uh, two of Google. That just means guys that, you know, really got to understand that the, the game is won on page one. And the, the research that we have found is that there's approximately 170 million Google researches for the word exporter of products and services. So there's a lot of competition out there for you. And Google is more than 65% ultimately of that search. So it's a big part that you want to look at some of the other search engines, but Google is by far going to be your, your best line to generate and look at uh, generating uh, new opportunities and leads through uh, your advertising campaigns. Bing is a close second. And, and you want to look at that as they approximately have about 20 to 25% of the marketplace on searches. Um, when we talk about SEO, it's really good for you guys to understand there's really four basic pillars uh, to organic SEO and successful SEO. And, and this is something that, you know, as we talk with folks, you know, through this process is that you want to make sure your internal teams are, are really taking a close look at these four pillars. You know, it's, it's the on-page coding. It's really, you know, cracking the code. Um, on-page content. Content is king. Uh, making sure that you have a tremendous amount of content that, that your audience is really researching and looking for. And then the inbound link uh, authority, you know, that's just making sure you have quality backlinks. It's not the number of backlinks, but it's the quality. So you can look within your, your own uh, segment of sharing backlinks. You're looking within associations of those backlinks. Um, and then you can also have the ability to use social media signals, which really, you know, it's one of the newer pillars to SEO and what Google's brought into their algorithm. Social media does count and it's a great way to create backlinks from your Twitter account, your Instagram account, your LinkedIn account, and of course your Facebook account from a US and international approach. When we get into SEO, a lot of common questions we get is, hey, can you just ultimately, can you, you know, SEO our website, which is kind of funny because it's not even a relevant word, but SEO is a process, guys. This is, this is not a short term, do it one time. Um, it's best to make sure that you guys understand that the algorithm is constantly changing. Um, there is never not enough content. And where, where Google is currently and where Google is headed to, it is looking for real relevant content that as you start to understand your circle of your sales uh, profile, 
and the sales of the buyer journey, you're going to get a lot of input from your clients of how they actually found you, you know, who influenced them uh, to your site, you know, where are they reading about your service and, and products. And then from there, you can always have, there are great tools that you can go look at your competitors' websites and, and scrape their keywords off of, the, off of the code of their site so that you can test those keywords to see if there's any relevant keywords that you can use to optimize for your site so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So it's pretty fantastic in the process that can be done now in SEO and, and the success and results that you can get. When we look at how do you target international buyers, you know, it, it's gonna come down to four or five different uh, items action items, demographic traits, you know, where are they, where, what part of the um, uh, globe are they from? What decisions are, who makes those decisions? You can also use advertising to find out, it's called an intent to buy audience of people that are looking at your site and your competitor site. Um, who, in, who in their past work experience um, financial goals, motivation of those of those uh, customers and clients out there, looking at competitive research and demographics, and understanding your 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 clients' pain points. What what has caused them to go on to Google uh, to research you? What has caused them to go to a, a conference and understand what information they're trying to gather? That that's all in that buyer profile that you're looking. Uh, to, to create and it's an, it's an ever moving uh, target, right? What, what your buyer profile is today is going to evolve as you get more data from your analytics, from your AdWords, from your sales team. This is constantly evolving, which is great. Your marketing and sales teams should be coming together and understanding the buyer profile and what information that they're looking for to feed their decision making process. Now, this is a great model for your internal marketing teams to kind of follow. It's something that we developed about eight or nine years ago, attract, motivate, convert and engage. This is really the core value to what our account directors and what our internal strategists use. You know, one, how do you attract your audience? You know, what are the different type of tactics? We're looking at pillar content, specific advertising campaigns, both on social and Google. Um, you know, what is motivating them? You know, how do we get them, you know, to engage and fill out that website form? And that's what we talked about earlier about the downloadable content, you know, research, wall, white papers, testimonial videos of your cu customers. No one, no one tells your story better than your customers. And then the opportunity itself and, and content and blog, you know, how do you convert them? We talked about con classic conversion uh, marketing. You have to have a great value proposition. You have less than 42 seconds when someone comes across your, your website to be able to make a decision. So you have to have a lot of great information above the fold of why, you know, someone is interested in your product, someone is interested in your service, what do you do that is unique that no one else does? What's that, what's that proposition to the marketplace? And then the downloadable content, the industry re, you know, research reports, um, and, then, and then marketing brochures. At the end of the day, a job of a marketer is to drive traffic to your, to your website. And then that website has to take that next step and be able to convert that into a phone call or into a, a web form. And then they engage. What do you do when you generate hundreds and hundreds of, of leads on a monthly basis and your sales team is calling through them and, and, and engaging with them? How do you nurture those relationships that you don't talk to? And, you know, email marketing nurturing campaigns are fantastic. Social media engagement from Facebook and LinkedIn are outstanding. You know, we also always promote, you know, public relations, those great stories that, um, that are written about your brand um, from the journey of the customer and from the brand itself and then from the executive team um, are, are great ways to drip on your, your ultimately your nurturing of your, of your prospects and leads. And then we love how-to videos, especially in the interna international market. 
um, where you can explain your product and services in a little more detail, anywhere between three to five minute clips. Fantastic. We kind of talked earlier about, you know, the process of, uh, you know, the journey that your buyer takes, you know, creating that awareness where they're, you know, one time they're going to see an advertisement, they're going to see you at a conference, they're going to read about you in a, in a editorial content from a PR opportunity, they're going to come across, you know, a digital ad because they were at a specific site that you know that that's typically where your buyers are reading and informed by. Um, they're going to come to your site. You're going to eventually attract them to your site uh, by those digital tactics and the footprint that you're going to have out there. As they come through that, the consideration state, this is where you're building that awareness, interest, and taking action. This is where case studies, this is gated content. This is additional downloadable content across other pages within your website, which you know that have the greatest interest to your buyer profile. And then sharing reports, uh, having webcasts, being on podcasts, doing everything you can to create, which is kind of, I, I consider to be the internet, you know, plumber of the world. Your website wants to be connected, needs to be connected. Google wants you to be connected, you know, your website to your social media backlinks, to your, uh, to your uh, blogs, your editorial content, to your placements, to your videos, to your advertisement. It has to act as a hub. And all that content needs to feed through it to really maximize your opportunity with, with Google. And then finally, you want to get them to that decision stage. You want them, you know, focus content at that moment of making those decisions. Bringing people on the webinars like we're doing today to walk through your process and, your, and share your products and share your uh, services with them. And do it on a Zoom call so you can meet them face to face. And then we at Top Fire have developed a, a really a proven system of converting leads on the, on the website. We, it's called long form style. And what we have found out over the last you know, eight to 10 years of, of building hundreds of websites and generating hundreds of thousands of leads for our clients is that you have to answer the five to six basic questions that your, your, your buyer profile is looking for. And in regards to that, so you got to look at, you know, what, what your product, what your services offer, what the investment levels are going to be, what, what makes it unique, you know, from that standpoint. So it's fantastic. And you can outline that on the long style homepage so that you can grab all that information and then they can make a decision an informed decision to fill out that form, or they can ask more questions to you. Um, but it's got to be designed mobile first. We know that 68% of everyone in this room is going to be at one time or another going to be searching their competitor or looking online uh, for the service or product from an international exporter on their mobile phone. So everything's got to be designed mobile first. And then you got to be able to answer those five or six questions and you'll start to, you'll start to see your conversion rate increase uh, over time and make sure that above the fold, you have the ability to have a form fill, the downloadable content, you need to have some kind of incentive and we use the ebook or downloadable content. And you have to have custom buttons that are really easy for people to call you and for really easy for people to share their information with you. When you make it really difficult and you ask 62 questions on your contact form or on your website, you understand that you're gonna have a high bounce rate and you're, you're gonna limit your opportunity to convert, um, which is really good information and, and really is best practices of overall digital advertising. Um, one of the things that we recommend is using and utilizing structured data. Um, and this is where we see one of the highest uh, outcomes for organic SEO is using rich snippets, which allow for more interaction and more engagement. It also takes up a lot more property on the home page or the first page of Google, the second page of Google, when you start asking the more frequently questions, your FAQs and how to guides, um, it is uh, outstanding and, and Google allows this and it allows them to understand the content better. So it's really going to start to really hone in on your audience. You're going to start to see higher quality leads come through this campaign and you're going to start to see your sales increase based off of this uh, type of SEO structure of data. 
digital marketing, you know, we talked about this early content is king. Um, you know, we, from an advertising and a marketing agency, and as we recommend to everyone who has internal marketing teams, it, understanding your segment is, is truly within your site is, is imperative to make sure that you're sending the focused content out to your audience. Um, and you need to communicate, you know, how to solve those searchers questions. It goes back to the landing page that we talked about. Um, when we look at those five or six questions, we know that these are the questions that people are searching for, that they want information before they're going to engage or before they're going to take action and fill out a form or call. Um, and then above the fold, it's by far the most expensive realty in, in the world. Um, you have a limited amount of it on your website and you got to make sure that, you know, you position your brand and what makes you unique and what separates you from your competitors. Um, and then you want to make sure that, you know, in every one of your websites from a best practice standpoint, you have a, a newsroom and you have a, a blog uh, area. Uh, so that is how we uh, curate content to the site to ensure that your keyword rankings are improving. And really, Google is finding you and indexing your site on a regular basis. So crafting your message. Now that you understand your buyer, the buyer journey, you know, first you got to go through now and figure out, you know, location, age, income, career, um, how, how and where, you know, their information is, is consumed. You know, we always say who, what, where, when, and how. Those are the answers that have to be really focused on. And then we have to strive on providing solutions to problems explain the features versus uh, uh, benefits. What is it in for your buyer? Um, what makes you, what separates you to choose your business over one of your competitors? You know, offer examples and illustrate results and outcomes, current products and services. How do they affect the outcome and result? Um, and then build a strong call to action. You know, you want the goal, again, fill out the form, submit an email, share content. Um, you want to make sure this message that is developed is applied across all channels, not just digital, not just Google, not just on social media. So a little bit, and I'll go, I'll start to kind of go quick here. Now I know uh, my time is running up here soon. Um, this is, you know, a page and we'll be able to share this obviously with everyone as well. This is just a high level uh, search engine optimization. Uh, SEM and, and social media advertising direction. This is really our best practices that we apply to all of our clients. Um, it's understanding where the different type of advertising tactics, one from Google as a Google Premier partner, you want to look at, you know, intent to buy audiences. You have the ability to target your competitor's site. So if someone is actually researching your competitor's site, you can drop a cookie and have a display ad follow them around, which you can imagine those type of leads that come from that campaign, they will close at a lot higher than a traditional uh, uh, keyword, uh, you know, uh, pay-per-click campaign will. There's retargeting, um, and then there's also lookalike audiences that you can leverage. There's Gmail advertising. If anyone has a Gmail account, you have the ability to target buyers and profiles based off of their Gmail use. Um, and then we look at budget allocation, you know, that intent to purchase prospect based on the search criteria, um, mid top funnel prospects, customer targeting for, for those brands that have a high list of customers, you can turn that into a lookalike audience. You could tell Google and Facebook, go find more people that look like this, which uh, fantastic leads that come through there and close at a higher rate. Um, and then, you know, we can also you know, target exporters um, based on service and category, um, based on their interest or profile. So there's a lot of great information that you guys can take from this. You know, our approach and the approach that we recommend is, is really focus on traffic to lead conversion, um, understanding the A-B testing and testing, not just in one target channel, but looking at multiple channels of the message that you can test. Um, and then, you know, some of those tactics we've talked about, the custom intent, competitor advertising, retargeting advertising, traditional pay-per-click advertising, social media advertising are all fantastic vehicles to start your campaign off. 
based off of data, based off results, based off KPIs, um, any really solid advertising agency understands it's not a set it and forget it. They have to take that data and then from that data that comes in through those campaigns, you're making slight shifts and, and strategy changes to the overall strategy and moving and allocating different advertising budgets where you're getting the highest ROI. So measurement refinement and then we're almost done with the digital component and I'll jump over to PR really quickly. Um, you guys know your website's a living, breathing marketing tool. Um, it's open 24 seven. It's there to answer questions for you. It's there to generate new business for you. Um, and understanding where some of the basic benchmarks that are out there, um, the different traffic types and how those traffic types mean and quality of leads that they come through, organic search, uh, referral, direct, paid and, and social, measurable outcomes you, as you wanna be talking with your internal marketing folks you know, how many online visitors did we generate? How many session durations? What was my bounce rate? What's my conversion rate? And then leads into sales, right? That's the most important that any agency should be reporting a baseline for every one of their clients. And then identifying your desired ROI. Again, you can reverse engineer your, not only your advertising budgets into new leads and clients, but you can reverse engineer your data points into how much traffic you need to generate X amount of new clients on a yearly basis. Um, it's very, uh, uh, you know, it's a proven approach where you can leverage this data to understand if you need to have a higher increase in traffic to your site, you know, you have to do two or three certain different tactics from Google organic and also social. So PR and I'll, and I'll continue to kind of go through a high level, public relations and again it's gonna be great you guys we're going to share this uh deck with everyone as well um the the when you look at public relations the the biggest benefit is going to be how do you position your brand in the marketplace what is the media that you're looking to target to get your message into how are you leveraging those media placements in relationships with publishers and reporters on the stories that'll be written about your brand. Do you want to be more brand focused? Do you want to be more product focused, more service pro focused? And then you want to make sure that the key spokesperson of, of, of your brand is one, a thought leader, and you position them as a thought leader through this entire process. But this is a great credibility play. Um, this also has an incredible impact to your organic SEO results. Tier one and tier two publication backlinks are some of the best backlinks you can get to help your website move to the front end of the search engine, which is really you're getting more traffic and you're getting more targeted uh, buyers that come through based off of merging and integrating your SEO and, and your digital advertising uh, campaigns together. When we talk about this data style stories, I mean, that's first thing reporters want to know. Let's talk about the products. How does it impact the, the end result, end user? Um, how does the service affect the industry? Do you have case studies that you can share with us? And that's a big part of this. And then we know how brands are, you know, how are they leading, you know, in today's society and how it's changed before COVID today. They want to know what is happening, you know, seasonally, the charity efforts, what type of events are they are you guys attention? What kind of launch product launches are you having? What kind of announcements? about milestones about the business. This is exactly what reporters and what, and what publishers are looking for so that they can curate their content schedule around your, your announcement. And, and what to expect. This is another one of those common questions that I get all the time. Okay, I, I'm, I'm investing you know, anywhere between five to $10,000 in PR. What should I expect now? Um, and, and what you should expect, and, and again, there's a lot of great information on this slide, you should expect interviews and you should expect media placements. Um, those are the two key drivers of, of, of public relations. If you're not getting any type of interviews, you're never going to get media placements. Um, so those are the two things that you really want to be talking with your internal PR or if you ever look at hiring a PR company. They're, they're by far the two critical uh, KPIs in measuring a success. If, if you're working with a PR company or internal PR person and you don't have any media 
hits, any media interviews and media placements, you can go back to what is driving that business, which is the ultimate interviews and interactions with the media uh, list. What we look at for just a you know high level of what the first 30 days should look like for a PR uh, opportunity and PR campaign, it, it's really, it's the getting to know each other phase, understanding the brand, talking with your product manager, your service manager, talking with the executive team, reviewing any other PR that's been done, any other content that's been done, and then having high level conversations about strategy and, and also discuss media list, you know, where's your targeted opportunities. Um, and then from there, it's really starting to set out the next, you know, three to six months um, of the opportunities that are out there. Um, the next slide is really talking about the next 120 days and this is now where the meat of the initial results and it will come from. This is where you're starting to have, you know, weekly calls with your, your PR manager based on the amount of opportunities from uh, the media that are starting to come through. This is where you're continually um, to monitoring and seeing your SEO and seeing the, the website increase based on impressions and searches off of your PR campaign. Um, this is the ability based on feedback from reporters and publishers refining and revising your key messages um, and really determining um, and defining your long-term strategy to complement your business growth goals, um, which is fantastic stuff. And then, you know, starting to, you know, come to in, in conclusion of my presentation today, um, we feel that an integrated marketing strategy really needs to be led by a strong digital advertising and marketing effort and complemented by an integrated public relations uh, strategy that is going to involve both PR and digital working together um, to ultimately give you the greatest uh, return on your investment of your advertising dollars and marketing dollars, but also give you the best opportunity to be successful and reach those targeted audience across the globe and internationally. Um, and one of the things that we would like to offer to, you know, the audience today is uh, a free digital assessment. We'd be more than happy uh, to assess, you know, your website from a, a technical audit um, called Action. Um, we also, we'd be more than happy to do an SEO performance and ranking um, audit for you. And uh, if you guys like, we'd be more than happy to do a pay-per-click uh, audit and assessment for you. In conclusion, uh, we appreciate the opportunity again to uh, speak at the Think Global Conference. Um, this has been fun. Um, and if anyone would like to get a hold of myself or anyone from my team, you can, you can definitely hit me up on my email address and my phone number, which is 708-249-1090. And again, my name is Matthew Jonas, and I appreciate the opportunity. And you guys have yourself a great rest of your conference. Thank you very much.